the newspaper. Some would say it's a dying art. With the availability of the internet, millions can get the news at their fingertips. So why do we need papers delivered to our doorstep anymore? Well, it's definitely true that the internet has become a game changer, but people have always needed to be informed, and the newspaper has fulfilled that need for a long time. Written news may be changing, but it will forever be important in our society. The rest of this lesson discusses how to write an article in the style of a physical newspaper. The first step is to understand the structure of your newspaper article, as it's different from other forms of print. Structure is the arrangement or format of the writing. But remember, newspapers aren't structured like novels, essays, or even encyclopedia articles. First of all, newspapers are formatted into columns, where one article may span four or five columns across the page. Large, wordy paragraphs are not appealing for the column style. Instead, write short, concise paragraphs, perhaps only two or three sentences long. With this in mind, you will not structure your paragraphs like you normally do for an essay or English paper. You don't need to have a topic sentence, which is the opening sentence of a paragraph, that states what that paragraph will be about, or a closing sentence, which provides closure in the final sentence of a paragraph. Adding these will make your paragraphs too long. Now that we've discussed the overall structure, there are a few more items a newspaper article needs. One is a title, which is the name of the written work. Newspapers have limited space, so you need a short but strong title that will inform readers what the article is about. In addition, it needs to also draw the attention of the readers. You may want to save writing the title until after the rest of the article is written. The last item you need is a byline, which is the final line that states the author of the piece. A number of writers contribute to a newspaper, and so each article needs to state who wrote that piece. Remember that you can't forget to add the byline when you finish writing the article. Lastly, you need to remember that the main focus of a news article is to give unbiased information. Unless you're writing a persuasive piece, it's really important to remain objective. Furthermore, you want to limit unnecessary language. You won't need figurative language like metaphors, hyperbole, personification, analogies, and even simple things like snark or interpretation. Again, your focus is solely on describing the incident or topic of the article. Figurative language often will only take away from the facts of the case. The next step is to determine your content, which is the information found within the article. Each newspaper article will have its own topic, like a burglary, car accident, award that was won, or a sporting event. Newspapers have local news, national news, and even world news. Any event or incident worth mentioning can be found in a newspaper. Before you begin writing, decide on the content you need to make a fulfilling article. To do this, start with the answers to the five W questions. Who, what, when, why, and where. You can also consider the how of the case. To see this, let's use an example topic. Imagine you're writing an article about a big star coming to the area to perform a concert. Here are the W questions you need to answer in your article. Who is coming to perform? What type of event is it? When will the concert be? Why is the concert being put on? Where will the concert be held? And how can readers buy tickets? The final question shows an example of a how question you should have for an article with this topic. By no means does this list represent the only information you should include in your article, but using the five W's and an occasional H will get you all the basic information for your news article. Your ultimate goal is to provide a succinct but thorough account of the event. Once you have all the basic information, begin writing your article with those details. Keep in mind the guidelines for the structure, too. The final step is to add in any extra details that are pertinent to your article. Depending on your topic, you may need to add in more content that readers need to know beyond the basic information. To showcase this, let's return to our concert example. Not everyone enjoys music. Furthermore, some people who love music don't enjoy going to concerts, so why should they care about this topic? This is where you can add in further details. Perhaps a portion of the profits from the concert will go to a local charity, or maybe the concert will be larger than expected and will affect other traffic in the area. Or maybe the performer is a huge star and this is his final tour of his career. All of these examples show further details are often needed. When this is true, include them in your article after the basic information. To review, writing a newspaper article is different from other forms of print. To write one, follow these steps. Step one, determine the structure or format of your article. This should include a title, the name of the written work, short paragraphs to fit into a column, and a byline, which is the final line that states the author of the piece. Remember that you don't need to have a topic sentence, which is the opening sentence of a paragraph that states what that paragraph will be about, or a closing sentence, which provides closure in the final sentence of a paragraph. 
Step 2. Figure out your content, or information in the article. Answer the 5 W questions, and perhaps the how. Begin the article with this information. Step 3. Add in any other important information readers need to know about your topic. If you follow these steps, then you'll be able to write a concise and complete newspaper article. Of writing is writing that you can verify through evidence and facts. If you are writing objectively, you must remain as neutral as possible through the use of facts, statistics, and research. This type of writing is best used when you, as a writer, need to present unbiased information to an audience and then let them determine their own opinion. News reports and school textbooks often use objective writing. It's important to differentiate objective writing from subjective writing, which is writing that you cannot evaluate, calculate, or verify. Subjective writing might express feelings, opinions, and judgments. This would come in handy for writing a personal essay or an opinion column for a paper, but should not be used when the goal is to simply inform the audience. To keep your writing objective, try to follow these tips. Be specific instead of vague or general. Rather than writing, almost everyone voted for him, write, 82% of the company voted for him. Do not use opinionated, prejudiced, or exclusive language. Rather than writing, men and girls, write, men and women. Keep both equal, and keep both genders listening to you. Avoid using first person to keep it more professional and less about you. Rather than writing, I believe, Try using a fact or a credible source to prove your point, like, according to Smith, 1999. Try not to over-exaggerate your writing. It can help to never use words such as really, always, never, or very. These words can make your writing appear falsified or weak. Rather than writing, the race was really close, to be more informational by writing, the race was close enough to demand two recounts. Because it's important to understand the difference, and because some writers often use both subjective and objective writing styles, you should be able to distinguish which type of writing is which. To make it easy, let's simplify it to objective writing is fact-driven, and subjective writing is opinion-driven. For objective writing, you should be wondering, can you prove it? Has the writer proven it? Is this the writer's opinion, or is it factual information? Consider these questions for the following example. The company's president is an idiot. Anyone can see that. This example is subjective, because the writer is not providing any information that can be supported. Anyone can't see it, because the writer didn't provide evidence. The statement is based on the writer's opinion of the president, and, if anything, can be argued in the same manner by someone who favors the president. It's important to understand the strength in writing objectively. When leading with facts and information, it makes it hard for your audience to disagree. Why claim the president is an idiot if you can't prove it? People will be less inclined to listen to you, and you will lose your credibility. Since credibility is essential for any writer trying to present a point, Let's consider how we could show the company president is an idiot through evidence. In one year, the company's president has fired 60% of his leading executives, received 25 sexual harassment complaints from female staff members, and lost the company's number one ranking in the state. This sentence is now objective, because it gets the same idea across that the president is an idiot, but rather than making the claim and calling him the name, the rewrite lets the facts speak for the writer. An audience will be more inclined to support and believe the writer because the writer has used evidence instead of making the word idiot do all of the work. Here are a few more examples of how to make a subjective statement more objective. She hurt her leg really bad. Subjective, because it is not supported or proven, and the use of really makes it sound exaggerated. It can be changed to she broke her leg in three places. Objective, because it provides facts, and the audience can deduce that she must be in a lot of pain. I think the world will end soon. Subjective, because it speaks in first person and is vague. It can be changed to, according to Dr. Frank Stein, the world will end within the next 20 years. Objective, 
because it gets across the same idea but uses a credible source rather than I and gives a specific time reference, making it seem more truthful. Objective writing is writing that you can verify through evidence and facts. If you're writing objectively, you must remain as neutral as possible through the use of facts, statistics, and research. It's important to differentiate objective writing from subjective writing, which is writing that you cannot evaluate, calculate, or verify. To write objectively, avoid being vague, prejudiced, and over-exaggerated. Avoid using first person and try to include credible sources. Following those tips will make your writing more difficult to be argued against and will therefore assist in your credibility as a writer. Your audience will be more inclined to listen to what you're writing.